So it's not very often that I do a segment like this where I'm going to be talking specifically spoilers for a big Finnish story where I can't really talk about why I love the story so much without diving into spoilers. And because there is a paywall for big Finnish, and because maybe people aren't able to get on top of them uh, like first, like as soon as they come out, I thought that would turn this into its own little segment as well. So for those of you who don't have the context for this, the Sixth Doctor Adventures is currently undergoing a, a bit of a, a, a renaissance right now. Where we've got a brand new original companion with Hebe Harrison, played by Ruth Madeley. Ruth Madeley is a disabled actor, she's in a wheelchair, and the character Hebe Harrison is also in a wheelchair as well. Uh, the Sixth Doctor is joined by Mel, played by Bonnie Langford, of course. And we've got two box sets with them. The first one was Waterworld, which was introducing Hebe Harrison. And the second one is Purity Undreamed, where we take Hebe Harrison back home to modern day Sheffield. And we also meet Professor Patricia McBride, played by Imogen Stubbs, who is a professor who um, the, the sixth doctor... Uh, Mel and Hebe encounter trying to take down the mindless facility, a brainwashing organization, and all of that good stuff. Classic standard Doctor Who fare, but it's very, very fun. And over the course of the box set, we get to know uh, Patricia a bit more. Uh, she calls the Doctor, Ruth and Hebe, at one point to a Swedish facility in order to help them uh, solve a mystery of some Neanderthals that are there and some genetic experiments and such. And she also travels in time with them to the 26th century in the last story of the box set. And that's where we get into part three, Chronomancer, written by Robert Valentine. And Chronomancer is going to be the pivoting story where the entire direction of the Sixth Doctor adventures in its current form is going to change focus and priorities. But in order to talk about that, I need to get into spoilers. So for those of you who are watching this live, who want to maybe come back later, um, what I'll do is that I'm going to put Colin Baker on screen. And when Colin Baker leaves, that means we're no longer talking spoilers and you can come back and enjoy the live stream later. OK, um, so what we're going to do is that we're going to talk Colin Baker's um, the Sixth Doctor Adventures Purity Undreamed uh, and the incredibly massive directions that it takes in Chronomancer. So last warning, spoiler alert for Purity Undreamed. And if you're wondering why on earth is it called that, we're going to get into that in a moment. So. Over the course of the box set, Patricia McBride makes a few snarky comments and makes a few jabs at people's appearances and also brings up a couple of disparaging things every so often about Hebe being in a wheelchair. Nothing like cutting or cruel, but you do notice the odd jab here and there. It makes this box set incredibly re-listenable once you realise what, what happens when the mask slips. And it turns out that when they go to 26th century Sheffield... They go there, they see people in hover chairs, and they see people of different races and ethnicities, and they see all of this stuff, and the, the, the future, the glimmering hope of humanity in the future. Everyone's still here, we're not, we've not been destroyed by climate change or Liz Truss, we're all here. However, um, Patricia has a, something akin to a panic attack, and it's like, take me home, I want to go home, I want to get out of here. And everyone's like, okay, maybe she's just got culture shock, you know. The, the Sixth Doctor even says, like, you know, many of the companions that I bring on take to time travel like ducks to water. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, maybe should have maybe uh, uh, dropped in, uh, dropped the future on you a little bit more gently. And so the Sixth Doctor chats to Patricia, and the reason she was so upset about going to 26th century Sheffield is because she's a Tory. She didn't like the race mixing. There were lots of non-white people in the future, and she didn't like it. There were a lot of disabled people in the future, and she didn't like that either. Now, I'm being a bit glib when I say that she's a Tory, but you know, every best joke has a basis in reality, I guess. That's why Patricia McBride hated the future that she saw, because there was people of different of different races, there were disabled people there, and she thought that in the far future, things would have improved and would have gotten better for humanity. The Sixth Doctor is aghast at what he hears, and there's all this other stuff happening with chronomancers and vortex fighters and stuff like that in Sheffield as well. There's a more imminent threat in terms of the future of the city that's about to explode that he needs to sort out. So he says, you know what, I'm not even having this conversation. Get out of my TARDIS. Get out of here. I don't want to see you again. And then he has a lovely conversation with Mel saying, Mel, I don't say this enough, but Mel, thank you for being you. And he has this conversation with Mel about, you know, are, are people like born to hate or do they learn it? 
it's like like nature versus nurture but there's as some people just naturally like this where they give themselves over to their own biases and and their own dislike of of the unlike and then there's even a scene where um, Hebe Harrison has no idea what this conversation has been, and she goes to catch up to Patricia, who is, like, leaving this apartment complex where they're hatching out their next plan, and has a confrontation with Patricia and learns about this herself. Where are you going? Home. What's happened? Oh, leave me alone. Was it the doctor? Yes. Yes, it was. Thought so. The future freaked you out, didn't it? Is that so unreasonable? I don't see why it did. Oh, come on. I mean, surely you of all people must. What? Honestly, Hebe, you can't tell me you're happy to know there are still people like you in the future? Excuse me? The future's no different to now, is it? Worse even. Uh, I never realized you had a problem with me. I thought we were friends. We are. Oh, believe me, it's nothing personal. It couldn't be any more personal. Oh, uh, yes, yes, I understand that. Uh, I just thought... We'd have put a stop to it by then. A stop to it? So, so yeah, and now I understand why it's so important to maybe have a, a character like Hebe Harrison be um, like confronting these ideas that we see in Purity Undreamed. And oh snap, that's why it's called Purity Undreamed. Now, I said earlier glibly, oh, it turns out that Patricia McBride is uh, is a Tory. She's actually much more akin to someone like Jordan Peterson. She's a eugenicist. She is pseudo-fascist, where she believes that there is like, you know, a, a defect. There is something to be fixed about certain people and undesirable elements, shall we say. And I think that the Jordan Peterson of comparison is pretty apt considering that she's meant to be like a respected professor and a writer and stuff like that but oh snap she wants all the brown people dead no Colin I don't know why he disappeared he's still meant to be here no Colin come back in Chronomancer there is the big city ending um there, there is the big city ending catastrophe that's about to unfold that revolves around these suits which allow uh, these people uh, to go uh, into the vortex um these um th these chrono suits and the story ends with Patricia picking up one of these suits um, fr the, from uh, from Valen, uh, because basically um, the Doctor thinks um, the events of the end of the story meant that the suit also disappeared. But it turned out that Patricia got her hands on one of these suits and is now melded with it. And the nickname, the username that she gives to the suit is Purity. And then at the end of the story, the cliffhanger ending, has Hebe, because uh, there's been a recurring joke that Mel has got no frame of reference for movies uh, from the late 1980s onwards. So they're like, you know, let, let's watch Labyrinth. Let's go to the, the opening weekend, the premiere in the TARDIS. Oh, wait, did you feel that weird, like, that weird uh, shockwave in the timeline? They turn around, bam, Hebe's gone. Hebe's disappeared after Patricia managed to get her hold of a suit which allows her to travel backwards and forwards in time. And that's the cliffhanger ending, where it seems that Purity, aka Patricia, has somehow gone back in time and gotten rid of the undesirable elements. And Russell Chiaton, yes, it is a bit like Infinity War, where it seems like some people, because of Patricia, because of Purity's biases, have been snapped out of existence. So Hebe for all intents and purposes at the end of this box set, has never existed. And that's the cliffhanger ending of Purity Undreamed. And what's so fascinating about this is because in the behind-the-scenes talks, which were fascinating during this, Colin Baker, when talking about uh, the scene where he confronts Patricia about her biases, actually points out that it seems quite out of character for the Doctor to just, like, not... 
like try and have a conversation or a dialogue. In fact, in the behind the scenes, uh, Imogen Stubbs actually uses the word cancelling um, in, in context of the conversation of, wait, we're meant, we're meant to be having a conversation about how I'm a eugenicist as opposed to um, as opposed to shutting down the conversation because it's so abhorrent. And the sixth doctor is like, no, get out of my sight. I thought I picked my companions better than this. And I think the reason Colin reads it as out of character, I think it works so well in terms of giving the sixth doctor a flaw. This is possibly the sixth doctor's biggest mistake in this incarnation, sans the creation of the Vow Yard. The fact that he he was so taken aback by his own inability to be able to perceive these biases and put somebody like Hebe in her proximity, essentially putting her in danger. He wasn't, I, I think the reason he pushes Patricia out of that room in the conversation scene early on is because he feels guilty that he didn't pick his companions better. And that that realization that inward inflection prevents him from having the conversation with patricia and i think that the conversation of whether or not disabled people should exist uh, that's not really a conversation that you should be entertaining but because he didn't entertain that conversation it meant that patricia just left and was able to sit on those biases i think it's really interesting uh, a really interesting place to leave the sixth doctor for the future of these box sets but the fact that it went in that direction and um Jacqueline Rayner is is the basically the the equivalent of like producer of showrunner for water worlds and purity undreamed and presumably the future adventures of the sixth doctor mel and hebe harrison if hebe harrison does indeed come back and jacqueline rayner is um is a disabled uh writer she's she's autistic as or she's neurodivergent as far as i can tell um so i think that this comes from a very real place and we saw this conversation as well i talked about this last year with the release of the halloween apocalypse where there is a a conservative train of thought where it's like these are undesirable people who are out of sight out of mind um a real suggestion i know it was a knee-jerk reaction he's right to be upset but it blew up in his face really fast that's true like i don't really think there was a 100 percent right or clean way to get out of that situation for the sixth doctor but it, the fact that he had that gut reaction and i'm not saying that gut reaction was wrong but the fact that he had that reaction has seemed to have had some sort of catastrophic um unintended consequences for not just hebe but people who fit with in hebe's category shall we say or the disabled people and goodness knows what's going to be happening to any race mixing in the future of sheffield so yeah that's the sixth doctor's biggest mistake sans the valyard and also becoming the war doctor for a bit he brought on a jordan peterson eugenicist into the tardis when he had a disabled companion and i think that's such an interesting story approach that you could only dream of the tv show trying to trying to explore like people in the chat earlier were saying like adam mitchell like adam mitchell but somehow even worse but it's like, oh my goodness, it's like, I can't even imagine, like, Russell T. Davis maybe trying to tell a long-form story like this. I'm not saying he would be incapable of doing it, but I think the format of the revived series doesn't really lend itself to it. But with Big Finish, where they are able to go into these much more niche and experimental corners of the Doctor Who universe... I think Chronomancer is like the end result of that experiment and I love it and I, I Robert Valentine handled it so incredibly well where you know Patricia is obviously a massive piece of shit but the way that she's characterized the dialogue where it talks about um where patricia says that you know I, i'm your friend it's nothing personal she she is so she has such tunnel vision with this ideology that she doesn't that she thinks that she would be helping people like he be by getting rid of disabilities by getting rid of the diversity of humanity and i think that's so interesting and the and yeah the biggest mistake is that the doctor brought a tory onto the tardis and i think that's so fascinating to explore my only real gripe however with this is that we're not going to see the continuation of this story for another six or seven months may 2023 is a long time to wait for a cliffhanger like this it's mad um i really wish that we were getting another six melon hebe box set but 
how on earth are they going to get out of this one? I cannot wait to see uh, how it goes. I, I genuinely, this my jaw was on the floor frequently throughout Chronomancer in the directions it was taking. Yeah, terrific stuff. I don't think that as a box set, Purity Undreamed is the best box set of 2022. But in terms of taking you on a journey and basically justifying these expanded universe stories like we were talking about into the stars like you don't need to like really have the ninth doctor in there Th these are just really fun great stories that if you want more of the ninth doctor you're gonna get more of them and also more Sontarans and stuff like that but with purity undreamed it's like here's more of the sixth doctor and we're gonna tell this long-running politically charged story that's very relevant which like they don't mention him by name but i'm certain that this character is inspired by people like jordan peterson by taking this approach i cannot wait to see what happens with the the future of the sixth doctor set jacqueline rayner has been terrific for it yeah cannot wait 